patients with ME chronic fatigue syndrome have been reported by uh, other investigators in the past to have alterations in the immune system. We saw fewer of those effects in our gene expression studies than most of the other groups have seen. However, uh, it, the overall averages of the data we show are a little bit misleading. What we found was that in a subset of patients, there was actually a pretty extreme uh, alteration in the uh, immune response following exercise. What we saw was that in at least some of these patients, that there was an increase in both inflammatory and anti-inflammatory, these large increases. It looked almost like the pattern we see in patients who have the flu, for example. So that was one of the things that we did, we noticed. Uh, and this is a, a subset of, of probably about 20% of the patients. Many investigators have uh, done experiments and, uh, and believe that, in fact, the immune system is intimately involved in the condition of uh, ME chronic fatigue. Uh, we actually don't believe it directly causes the symptoms in most cases of, of chronic fatigue fibromyalgia uh, directly. However, indirectly, we think it's extremely important in at least a subset, if not all, of the patients. What we believe is that the immune cells in these patients are actually making autoantibodies against specific portions of the fatigue system that I've described previously, and by doing so, they can actually either increase or decrease the uh, amount of uh, expression, basically, of the genes that we're talking about, uh, so that, in fact, you, you genuinely do feel more or less fatigue because the, uh, the autoantibodies are either increasing the function of, the say, the, the adrenergic receptors or increasing the function of the ASIC receptors directly or actually decreasing the function so much that they actually alter the system in, in the opposite way so much that you again begin to feel fatigue. So we think that the autoantibodies may be the answer to this uh, in at least a subset, if not all, of the chronic fatigue patients. So there is a question of, uh, is the immune system different in women than men? And that might, might that explain why many more women have chronic fatigue syndrome ME than, than uh, men. Uh, it turns out that the immune system in women, if anything, is more active than that in men. It's actually uh, 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 women react more to almost any pathogen than men do. And it's been shown again and again. There's a whole series of studies that have been shown that that's true. If, in fact, the condition of chronic fatigue ME is actually caused, at least in some cases, by autoantibodies, this would make a lot of sense then why it would be that women might have a lot more cases of uh, chronic fatigue uh, uh, ME than men. The, the question is, what is the, the most important research that is ongoing now that I, that I believe is the, the best uh, uh, research that's going on in this area? Well, there's a number of di different things going on that are really, I think, going to be uh, uh, groundbreaking and thrilling to the patients in, in the near future. Uh, one of them is that we actually are now concentrating, uh, we hope, uh, on some of the, the autoantibodies that might actually be causing uh, chronic fatigue syndrome in at least some of the patients. So we have some current studies going on with that, and so do several other groups. So that's one area. The other area is the area of epigenetics. So the tools that uh, we now have in the field of uh, genetics are just uh, unbelievably much more powerful than they have been in the past. In the last three or four years, uh, techniques have been developed to actually look at exactly what turns genes on and off that actually are causing diseases of many, very, many types. This is particularly prominent in the area of cancer, but people now are just beginning to work on this in chronic fatigue syndrome. This is, has the ability to really uh, allow us not just to come up with biomarkers for uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and ME, which we very likely will be able to do using these new techniques, but it also has the ability to allow us to actually make genetic alterations in people. 
this is something that was unheard of until just two years ago, and now there are many studies going on. They're actually doing what was called gene editing, and they're doing. It's been done in a few uh, human conditions and in many animal models now that will allow us to actually change, once we discover exactly what is, is, is altered in these patients, we'll be af actually able to change it back to something that is actually more normal. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube, tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp het me-cvsvereniging.nl Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.